Hey guys, welcome back to Med with Made Simple. In today's video, we're gonna see about megaloblastic anemia. Before moving on, make sure to smash the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you can keep watching all my upcoming videos for free. And also, don't forget to check out our official merch. The link is in the description of this video. Also, check out our other channel, Two Minute Doc, where you can learn about various drugs and diseases in just two minutes. Megaloblastic anemia is a condition which is characterized by the presence of abnormally large RBC precursor cells called as megaloblasts in the bone marrow. Watch this video till the end to learn about the various things you must learn about megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia is caused by three important causes, namely vitamin B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, and pernicious anemia. Vitamin B12 deficiency can occur because of reduced intake as seen in pure vegetarians who do not consume meat, which is actually one of the richest sources of vitamin B12. It can also occur in malabsorption conditions like ileal resection because Ileum is the ileum which is the terminal part of the small intestine is a common is the uh, site of maximum vitamin B12 absorption. In ileal pathology like tumors where ileum is resected, there will be vitamin D B12 deficiency due to impaired absorption. And in malabsorption syndromes, there will be deficiency of vitamin B12 along with other nutrients. When you consume food rich in vitamin B12, there is a protein in the saliva called as haptocorin which binds with vitamin B12. This, this is to prevent the degradation of vitamin B12 by the gastric acid. So this haptocore in vitamin B12 complex reaches the duodenum. There are certain enzymes which are secreted by the pancreas which reach the duodenum, which are secreted into the, into the duodenum, which break the vitamin B12 haptocorin complex. The parietal cells which are present in the gastric wall secretes intrinsic factor. This intrinsic factor now binds with the free vitamin B12 which is present at the duodenum to form intrinsic factor vitamin B12 complex. This intrinsic factor vitamin B12 complex reaches the terminal ileum of the small intestine. There are now this intrinsic factor vitamin B12 complex is absorbed into the enterocytes, which are the lining epithelium of the uh, ileum, and there are certain receptors called as cubulin receptors, uh, with the help of which intrinsic factor vitamin B12 complex is absorbed into the enterocytes. And now this vitamin B12 is separated from uh, the, the intrinsic factor and transported to various target size sites through transport protein called as transcobalamin 2. Now, vitamin B12 is helpful in various reactions in the body. For example, in conversion of homocysteine to methionine. In vitamin B12 deficiency, homocysteine will be accumulated in the body, so methionine will not be formed. Instead, homocysteine levels will be elevated in the blood. This leads to atherosclerotic conditions like myocardial infarction and stroke. And this is one of the common causes uh, for uh, myocardial infarction and stroke in young individuals. Vitamin B2 is also helpful in the conversion of methylmalonyl coa to succinyl coa. The succinyl coa is helpful in formation of myelin sheath uh, around the neurons. So, in vitamin B2 deficiency, this is not happening. So, methylmalonyl coa levels will be elevated and succinyl coa will not be formed. So, myelination is not happening. So, this leads to demyelination. And this commonly affects uh, certain tracts in the spinal cord leading to a condition called a subacute combined degeneration. This commonly involves the posterior column and the pyramidal tracts in the spinal cord. Along with this, the patients will have beefy red tongue. Vitamin B12 is helpful in DNA synthesis. The deficiency of vitamin B12 leads to impaired DNA synthesis. This results in nuclear cytoplasmic asynchrony. This is the reason for abnormally large size cytoplasm which keeps growing. Uh, compared to the normal size of the RBCs, this is the uh, cause for uh, the presence of abnormally large RBC precursor cells called as megaloblasts in the bone marrow. Diagnosis can be done with the help of complete hemogram with peripheral smear. In complete hemogram, we can see Hb is decreased, hemoglobin is decreased because this is anemia. Along with that, all our, all the cell lines are found to be decreased. RBC, WBC platelets are decreased because here the DNA synthesis is affected in vitamin B12 deficiency affecting all the cell lines. The RBC indices which are very important to know. In this we can see that MCV mean corpus low volume is increased. Um, this reflects the size of the RBCs. We all know that megaloblastic anemia will have large RBCs. So we can correlate with this with that. MCV is elevated. The mean corpus low hemoglobin is also increased. So this is the, the main uh, corpus low hemoglobin is the amount of hemoglobin which is present in the RBCs. So can we know that this is also increased. And one important thing to remember is that the mean corpus low hemoglobin concentration is normal in megaloblastic anemia. Okay? So that is one important point to remember. 
So the peripheral smear, we can see that uh, uh, these cells are the megaloblasts which are present on the right side. The cells which are present on the left side are normal shaped RBCs, uh, which are this. These are these are put side by side to compare the size of the normal size RBCs with the megaloblasts. And in the right, you can see hypersegmented neutrophils. Uh, here you can see that the segments of the nuclei in the neutrophils are more in number compared to the usual number. And here you can see Howell Jolly bodies. So this is how a peripheral smear of uh, megablastic anemia patients gonna look like. You can see normal RBCs, oval macrocytes, Howell Jolly bodies, and hypersegmented neutrophils. Bone marrow aspiration can be done, which usually shows hypercellular marrow consisting mainly of the precursor or the immature cells. Uh, the, you can also see uh, the cells which are predominantly seen in bone marrow aspiration are the megablasts. You can also see hypersegmented neutrophils. And you can also see megakaryocytes, which are the precursors of the platelets. Schilling test is a test which is used to identify the etiology of vitamin B12 deficiency. If we are trying to see if the deficiency of vitamin B12 is due to deficiency of intrinsic factor or not. Uh, uh, apart from that, we can see elevated levels of methylmalonyl CoA and homocysteine in the blood of these patients with vitamin B12 deficiency. The reason is already explained in the previous slides. Now we will see some points related to folic acid deficiency. Folic acid is helpful in various one carbon transfer reactions in the body which you are studying in biochemistry and these one carbon transfer reactions all is, uh, some of these one carbon transfer reactions are helpful in DNA synthesis so folic acid deficiency also causes impaired DNA synthesis and this indirectly causes megaloblastic anemia so you can see that uh, folic acid is helpful in the one carbon transfer reaction involved in the conversion of homocysteine to methionine which is helpful um, which is helping vitamin B12 in this process of conversion of homocysteine to methionine so in deficiency of vitamin B12, what happens is that the methyl, TH, methyl THFA will not be converted to THFA and this will accumulate in the body along with the accumulation of homocysteine. So since this methyl THFA, the folic acid is being trapped in methyl THFA, this is called as folate trap. And homocysteine levels are elevated. Uh, this leads to atherosclerotic events. So that is what is causing folate trap because the methyl THFA is getting accumulated. The folic acid is getting trapped in that. So vitamin B12 deficiency and folate deficiency can be present together. In these cases, uh, when you just see a patient, patient with uh, megaloblastic anemia, starting them with uh, folate alone can worsen the subacute combined degeneration present because this will worsen the, um, worsen the manifestations caused by vitamin B12 deficiency. So it should be adequately, they should be adequately treated with folate and vitamin B12 based on the deficiency present in them. So serum B12 levels should also be assessed, uh, assayed, okay? So if B12 deficiency is present, B12 should be supplemented. Uh, it can be supplemented either by either parental route or oral route depending upon the amount, um, I mean the severity of deficiency. Uh, so severely deficient uh, patients or those with uh, already developed subacute uh, combined degeneration should be treated with parental forms. Um, usually intramuscular forms are available for vitamin B12. So before moving on uh, further, if you enjoyed this video till now, please make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe uh, for more similar videos. Now we'll see some points related to pernicious anemia, which is a autoimmune disorder where the autoimmune T cells will destroy the uh, parietal cells in the stomach uh, causing deficiency of intrinsic factor. So you, you can see that there will be production of autoantibodies against the parietal cells in the stomach and the intrinsic factor. So we have already seen that the parietal cells in the stomach secrete intrinsic factor. Uh, what happens is that these autoimmune T cells will come and destroy these parietal cells. So the treatment of vitamin B12 deficiency is by oral or parental B12, uh, B12 therapy. Uh, so the parental therapy usually involves six doses of thousand, each of 1000 microgram uh, intramuscular vitamin B12 injections. Now, folate deficiency is treated by uh, oral folate. Uh, the dose is usually 5 to 15 mg per day. And in pregnancy, folate is very, very important, especially in the first trimester to prevent the neural tube defects like anencephaly and spina bifida. If you came to the end of this video, you can support my channel 
by donating on Patreon. The link is in the descri description of this video. And also you can support my channel by purchasing my merch. The link is in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. You can suggest more videos in the comment section below. And you can follow me on the social media by clicking on the links in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'll see you guys in my next video.